He earned a BA and an MA in German from BYU and an MA and PhD from Princeton in linguistics. He began his teaching career at Cornell University, where he taught until 1978, uh, with a two-year interruption when he served as the director of language proficiency testing at the CIA Language School in Washington, D.C. He joined the BYU faculty in 1978, has served in a number of ways, including as the director of the Humanities Research Center and as the dean of the College of Humanities. Professor Jones is a member of a number of academic boards, professional societies, uh, has published a number of papers and made uh, numerous presentations, and is a good friend of the Kennedy Center. We're pleased to welcome him here today to lecture on the topic of language use in Luxembourg, multilingualism, or linguistic schizophrenia. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak here today, and I appreciate especially the funding that the Kennedy Center provided for me in support of doing some of the research for this study. And I appreciate your taking the hour out of the sun to come and be here. I'll do my best to make it worth your while. I realize that the, uh, the grass outside is probably more appealing, so you're here for duty, and that's good. One of the most prominent features of national and cultural identity is the use of language. Attitudes toward language and language choice can help to build bridges, promote peace, and bring people closer together. But it can also lead to prejudice, misunderstanding, hostility, and even bloodshed. For many languages, there is a country which is closely identified by name. For example, German in Germany, Danish in Denmark, Polish in Poland, French in France, Chinese in China. Some languages have official status in more than one country. For example, English, Arabic, Spanish, and German. And some countries have more than one national or official language. For example, Switzerland, Belgium, Canada, and Luxembourg. The term multilingualism is generally used to describe the linguistic situation of countries in which more than one language has an official status. This term, however, is ambiguous because it also describes the ability of an individual to use more than one language with some degree of functional proficiency. Confusion, therefore, arises if the perception exists that residents of a multilingual country are also multilingual. A case in point is Switzerland, which is often the textbook example of multilingualism in Europe. German, French, Italian, and Romanche are considered national languages of Switzerland. However, Switzerland, like many multilingual countries, is largely a country of linguistic segregation. With the exception of some of the border areas and the canton of Graubünden, where Romanche is spoken, each of the language areas is essentially monolingual. Especially in the German and French regions, very few people have occasion to use anything but their own language on a daily basis. Nor can many claim to be functionally bilingual. But that is a topic of another lecture, perhaps next year. Today, we look at Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a small and beautiful country located at the strategic crossroads of Western Europe. Its recorded history goes back to the 10th century when Siegfried, Count of Ardennes, purchased a rocky promontory and built a small fortress. It became known as Lutzillenburg, literally, the small fortress. The uh, first part of that word, Lützel, is very close to English little. As a matter of fact, it's cognate with uh, North German little. And Burg, you may recognize as German Burg, if you know German. The territory around the fortress expanded and grew in importance, and by the 17th century, it was a relatively large country, at least much larger than it is today. It was passed around through the ages, occupied at various times by Prussia, Habsburg, uh, I should say Habsburg, Austria, Burgundy, Spain, the Netherlands, France, France, Belgium, and most recently Germany during the Second World War. During the 19th century, by war and by treaty, much of the territory of Luxembourg was transferred to the countries surrounding it, Germany, France, the Netherlands, and Belgium. At the Congress of Vienna in 1815, it was made a Grand Duchy. After World War II, it emerged as an independent constitutional monarchy. It is the only Grand Duchy in the world and the sixth smallest country in the world. It is less than 1,000 square miles, about the size of Utah County, and has a population of about 400,000 less than 70% of whom are native Luxembourgers. 
first overhead place. Let me just turn on this map, which is a map of the European Union countries in Europe. And if you're still looking for Luxembourg, it's right there in very small print, not to mention small size. Next overhead, please. Again, Luxembourg is right down here, bordered on the east by Germany, on the north and northeast, or northwest, I should say, by Belgium, and on the west and south by France. So it's really tucked in here among two very large countries and a third relatively large country. Next. To give you an idea of its size, these are the countries which surround Belgium, I'm sorry, Luxembourg, Germany, France, Belgium. The total of the four countries is about 935,000 square kilometers and a population of about 150 million. The contribution Luxembourg makes to this is about 0.32% as far as the size is concerned and 0.26% as far as the population is concerned. So I think I'm making my case. It's quite a small country in both size and population. Next, please. This is not a very good map, but at least a map of Luxembourg itself, again with Germany, Belgium, and France surrounding it. The capital city is also called Luxembourg, and then a variety of medium to smaller size cities scattered out throughout. But keep in mind, again, this is a very small territory, and the driving time from south to north is not really very long, and of course from west to east even less time. Next, please. To give you an idea of what's happened over the years, the outside is Luxembourg in the mid-17th century. And then little by little, pieces got chipped off and given to France, to Prussia, to Belgium, Netherlands, until today, this is Luxembourg as it remains. Now, there are a number of um, results of this. One is the fact that at one time, there were a lot of people in these areas, both on the west and the east, that spoke either French or German as their mother tongue. But today, the situation is that all native Luxembourgers speak Luxembourgish as their native tongue. Next, please. I mentioned the rock. This is the rock right here. Uh, it's a very beautiful area. And this is where Count Siegfried actually built his first fortress. There was once upon a time a very large fortress here. But by, treaty of, uh, by the uh, uh, Congress of Vienna Treaty, it was blown up and left with just a very small portion of it. And then underneath there, there are a lot of casemates you can go wandering through to see. Okay, that's all for now. In spite of its size, Luxembourg is an important player in the European Union. This is perhaps because Robert Schumann, a native Luxembourger, was one of the chief architects of the European Common Market, the predecessor to the European Union. Luxembourg City is home to several offices of the European Union, and as a result, there is an unusually high number of residents who live here from, out of other, from other countries. Luxembourg is not a country of choice for most American tourists. The path among the 10 countries in 14 days does not run very close to Luxembourg. And as a matter of fact, I would imagine that most Americans have only a foggy notion of what Luxembourg is, where it is, and what language is spoken there. For some, perhaps, they associate it more closely with gardens in Paris. My first trip to Luxembourg was not exactly by choice either, but rather the fact that in the 1960s and 1970s, Icelandic Airlines was the cheapest way to get to Europe, and they happened to land in Luxembourg. I failed to do any background reading in the country. Actually, I had planned to go straight from the airport to the train station and then on to Germany. So I guess I didn't see any necessity to do any background reading. I recall from the airport, the bus to the city, the city itself, a restaurant where I had lunch, and the train station, everything I read was in French. But I also recall hearing people around me speaking a language that I knew was not French. In fact, it sounded a lot like German, except I couldn't understand it. What I was hearing was what Luxembourgers have been speaking for centuries, Luxembourgish, or Luxembourgish, as it is known in its own language. What it is, and what role it plays in the lives of its citizens, became a topic of great interest to me and one that I wish to spend some time with talking to you about today. The first question that has to be asked is, what is the linguistic status of Luxembourgish? Is it really a language? Or is it a dialect of German that is used widely for oral communication but still subservient to French and German? Linguists often struggle with the question of what a language is and what a dialect is, 
and there is really no good set of airtight criteria to make a determination. Luxembourgish is clearly a derivative of West Moselle Franconian, the dialect spoken in nearby Germany, for example, in and around Trier. In 1984, the so-called Languages Act of Luxembourg declared Luxembourgish the official national language of the country. Luxembourgers are offended, as I found out, when their language is referred to as a German dialect. They say, no, it's a language by its, in, in its own right. And speaker's choice is a very important criterion in settling the debate about what is a language and what is a dialect. But is Luxembourgish really a full language, such as German and French? Here again, there's a lot of debate. The German linguist, linguist Heinz Kloss has classified languages such, in Lux, such as Luxembourgish as Ausbausprachen, or developing languages. That is, they're on the road to becoming a fully formed and dependent language, but they have not yet arrived. For all it's used as a language of communication, Luxembourg is still deficient in certain areas. For example, the lexicon or vocabulary of Luxembourgish is lacking in many respects, especially higher order concepts. Speakers therefore engage in a lot of what is known as code switching. Two Luxembourgers may be speaking in their native language about a number of topics and then gradually shift to a topic that is highly technical or abstract, a topic for which the lexicon of Luxembourgish is not sufficient, and they will then suddenly switch into French or German. But eventually they'll switch back to Luxembourgish, bid farewell to each other, and be on their way because Luxembourgish is the language of social interaction. There was no widely used orthography for Luxembourgish until the early 1900s, and then it went through, a, uh, through numerous revisions until a standard version was decided on in 1974. In the 19th century, one would see an occasional political cartoon in Luxembourgish in the newspaper, usually poking fun at a local institution, such as the fire department. But for the most part, native speakers were illiterate in their own language, because there simply was not anything to read. Even today, Luxembourgish is not commonly used as a written language. When I was in Luxembourg last spring, I asked someone in the city where I could find a bookstore. The reply was French or German. Indeed, the bookstores I visited were either predominantly French or German, with a very small section of books published in Luxembourgish, usually located in the basement. Most of the books in Luxembourgish, I found, were children's books. Second, next overhead. You may recognize this as like Richard Scarry's My First Word Book. It says literally, My First Thousand Words in Luxembourgish. And if you look over there, uh, you, if you know any Germanic language at all, you may be able to recognize the bathroom and the Stube, as they would call it in German, the, the living room, with items down the side and their various translations or words for them. Now, some words in Luxembourgish have been borrowed from French, some from German, but most of them are native words. If you just move up just a ways, look at the bottom row there. You can see radio is the same as it is in English and German. And, of course, CD, uh, borrowed from English. The uh, last couple of words in the bottom, obviously borrowed from French. Next one, please. Here's the uh, bedroom and the entryway, the hall. And again, along the top, down the side, and along the bottom, various words in Luxembourgish for the items that are represented there. Other books I found there were a translation of The Little Prince, kind of standard for most languages. And recently, a translation of Winnie the Pooh, as you can tell from the title here. Other books were primarily language learning books. Here's a German Luxembourgish dictionary, and Es Schwetzemir, which is a book about learning Luxembourgish for outsiders. Now, there's not a real big demand for this, but there are people that want to do it. And it's especially interesting for those who are coming in with children who will be living there, because in the schools, they use Luxembourgish quite a bit, and the children will feel very much out of place unless they know the local language. There have been modest literary attempts in Luxembourgish, but writers are discouraged because of the lack of a wide readership. Luxembourgers all read French and German with no difficulty, so there are, these are the languages of choice for literature. Poetry occasionally appears in print, 
But one can safely say that the literature of Luxembourg is for the most part a thing of the future. Next overhead. This is simply a poem that uh, I won't read to you and I won't translate for you. I can do neither actually, but to give you an idea for those of you who know German, what the written language looks like. I can best illustrate my point by looking at several domains of Luxembourgish and how the three languages, Luxembourgish, French, and German, interplay. First, however, let me give you a couple of samples of the language. Next overhead, please. Now look at this, and I think that with a little bit of examination, you'll recognize what it is, even though you may not be able to understand it by reading it. I'll give you one hint. It's a fairy tale. Now, if this low technology back here works, I'll turn this on and have you hear a woman read the story. So, we were on the bush rock eat, for the land of bush have a summer thing of fra, as in a sick hammer gewund. The young children at Hansen, am Mädchen geregel gehischt. Familie war arm, aber ein Glibens mit der Ömer Medaille gesehen, Gut und klar, nicht mehr genug Brot auf dem Tisch, für richtig zu gehen. Für die Pakte nur bis am Bettloch zu tiemen, als ich gewänzelt hat, und nicht schlufe konnte, wo Leute aus Sörchen, so und zu seiner Frau, für das Glück noch raus aus. Mit Pferd kriegen wir als Kammerwert, wenn wir für uns selber mal leicht mit Sörchen nun. Die Frau hat gern gesagt, wie ist der Wert? Mehr, ganz frei, für ihre Mat Kammer am Tisch, du, wo wir am tiefsten ab. Nimm an ihnen eine gute Feier, und ich schüttere einem noch ein Stück Brot. Da gehen wir schaffen, und lassen sie allein. Vom selben Fall müssen die Fee nicht mehr raus aus dem Busch, aber mehr sind sie los. Nee, Frau, so der Mann, der hat mir nicht auf die Kiefe gehauen. Fee kriegt sich die Verkehrs, mit dem Kammer am Busch allein zu lassen. Sie könnten da viel Däure kommen, als ein Stück herabben. Du, eh, Frau, da musst du nur gucken, wie den zwei Kammer verhängen. Sie hat ihm einfach kein Ruge los, bis sie mir recht genügt, mal so, die Arme kann man doch mal auf Rousseau lebt. How many understood everything? How many understood anything? Okay, if you know some German, you'll pick a few words out of there, like the past participle of what is modern German, geheißen, gehecht, and of course you also understood, also understood Hensel and Gretel, I would think. Let's look at some of these domains I mentioned earlier and see how Luxembourgish is used. At home, in most social interactions, at the workplace, in commerce, spoken Luxembourgish is virtually the exclusive language of communication among native Luxembourgers. Even in many official contexts, Luxembourgish is used. This has changed significantly since the 1984 Languages Act. Many Luxembourg children attend a preschool or nursery where only Luxembourgish is, is spoken. When they begin primary school, however, at about age six, they begin learning German, and in fact, it becomes the language of instruction. <clears throat> German is the first language most Luxembourg children learn how to read. Now, that's interesting. They become literate in a second language before they become literate in their own language. During the course of their school years, <clears throat> they have occasional lessons about their language, mainly to learn how to read and write. In the third year of primary school, they begin learning French and French becomes a second language of instruction. At the beginning of secondary school, at about age 10, they switch over to French as the main language of instruction, but continue with German in certain subjects, especially technical areas. Students continue to do some work in Luxembourgish, mainly reading and writing, but the languages of their education are French and German. These are not considered subject areas, the language of instruction. English is the first so-called second language. In principle, Luxembourgish is not a major language in the Luxembourg education system. In fact, however, there is usually a lot of Luxembourgish used unofficially in the schools. For example, as students have questions or need more explanation. It is used almost exclusively by the school children, of course, outside of class. By the time students graduate from school in Luxembourg, they are very proficient in German and French and quite proficient in English and they can read and write their own native language. At first blush, one might wonder why this odd linguistic arrangement. There are several good reasons. First, there are no universities in Luxembourg. So in order to continue one's education, 
It is necessary to attend a university in Germany, France, Belgium, or elsewhere. Do I have the next overhead, please? This gives you an idea of 1991, where Luxembourg school leavers went to the university. Uh, a relatively small number, but actually it's not as small as it may at first appear. Most of them chose Belgium as their university country, with quite a few going to France and Germany, a few Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, and then others, 194. So they have no opportunity for a higher education in Luxembourg, therefore they have to leave, and therefore it's necessary to have this language ability to be able to do that. Second, the Luxembourg economy and society depend on its citizens to be able to communicate freely with people from neighboring countries. That is, these are their trading partners. The two most widely used languages of the European Union are English and French, and Luxembourg wants to very much to continue its important role. Finally, a purely practical consideration, the education system saves enormous amounts of money by simply purchasing books and other materials already available in German and French, instead of having to write and publish their own. The language of restaurants is almost exclusively French in Luxembourg. The menus posted outside restaurants are always in French, usually with the German translation, sometimes English. Ethnic restaurants, such as Italian, may use the language of the cuisine as well as French and perhaps German. It is expected that service personnel in restaurants speak French and that French be the language of ordering. In pubs and less formal eating establishments, Luxembourgish is the common language. The one exception is McDonald's, where German is the language of choice. The reason for this, I was told, is that McDonald's franchise in Luxembourg is owned by a German country, company. This is the placemat of, like, I didn't actually eat there, by the way. I, I just got the placemat there. But if you look at that, you kind of wonder what language that is. A croissant, the German, the American Antwort au croissant. And if you can see that, it says, uh, the something warm croissant and so on. It's just a mixture of English and German. Just a joke, actually. But uh, everything else in the restaurant was all restaurant in McDonald's was all in German. The national press in Luxembourg is dominated by German. This is the newspaper I bought last May when I was there. I have the first overhead. To give you an idea, I've got a, a slide at the top part of this. And if you look at that, the name of the uh, newspaper is Luxemburger Wort, but also a little French up above it here. Für Wahrheit und Recht. And almost everything across here is in German. This article 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 begins in German. Next overhead, please. But as you turn the paper over, suddenly you find that there are a couple of articles in French. One here and one here. Everything else being in German. And Sie lesen heute, the table of contents, is mainly in German. Sometimes you'll have Kultur, la vie culturelle, translation into French. Now, as you go through the paper and get to a third section of it, then this happens. Next, please. It's mainly in French. That is, the boldface is in French, and the German comes underneath that, and every article for the next four pages is in French. The next page after that is sports, and that begins German. Toward the end of the paper, you get notices about obituaries, and if you can see from where you are, uh, notice that most of them are in Luxembourgish, a few in, is that Luxembourgish? I guess that's in, in French. Anyway, most of them Luxembourgish, a few in French, and then tossed in here are not obituaries, but articles about the church in German. So, weekly, I'm, I'm sorry, I need to mention this. I was interested to see this paper published last May, an article about Carl Malone receiving the MVP award for the National Basketball Association. I just happened to catch that when I was reading it. Weekly and local newspapers and flyers are using more and more Luxembourgish, although German and French are still very prominent. German has traditionally been the language of the Catholic Church in Luxembourg. Although since the liturgical reform of the Second Vatican Council in 1965, the use of Luxembourgish has increased dramatically. Because Vatican II preceded the 1984 language law by 19 years, German was at first used as the liturgical language after the Vatican Conference, and is still used today in many cases. The sermons, however, were, and still are, mainly in Luxembourgish. French and German are used for hymns. The choir might sing in French, German, Luxembourgish, or Latin. 
Unless it has appeared in the last few months, there is still no complete translation of the Bible in Luxembourgish. Scriptural readings, therefore, have traditionally been in German, although more and more Luxembourgish is used, especially for frequently used gospel readings. The situation in the LDS Church, may I say that? Okay, thank you. In Luxembourg is quite different. The membership is not a microcosm of the country, but rather made up of expatriates and some local members, only some of whom even speak or understand Luxembourgish. There's one branch in Luxembourg City, and it's part of the Brussels mission. That is, French speaking. I spoke with a branch president, who I believe was either British or American, I've forgotten now. He said that the meetings are usually held in French, but they encourage members who can to give talks and sacrament meeting in Luxembourgish. I spoke with the missionaries and was told that it would be very useful if one set of missionaries who were working there could speak German because some contacts do not feel comfortable in speaking French. The administration of government in, in, in Luxembourg is in French, but Luxembourg is the spoken language. That is, French for written things, Luxembourgish for spoken. Virtually all official signs and posters are in French. Most written communication relating to the House of Deputies, their parliament, is in French. But the debates and proceedings are almost exclusively in Luxembourgish. Next overhead, please. Here's a printed proceeding of one of the meetings of the House of, of Deputies. I'm sorry. Did you miss one? No, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I missed this. Uh, going back to the newspaper for just a minute, notice the interplay between German, French, and Luxembourgish. International politics, local politics, national news, culture. Culture is one where French does dominate. Automobiles and travel, sports, 100% German. Real estate, mostly German, some French. Weather, almost all German. Advertising, mostly in French. So overall, about 65% in German, 30% in French, and 5% in Luxembourgish. Next one, please. I'm sorry, I overlooked that one. If you look at this, this is a printed proceeding of the Council of Deputies. The, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, outline and so forth is all in French. The boilerplate is what I want to say. So you get down to here, everything's in French. And then it says it, it began on this particular date and so forth. And the president said, Ich machen die Sitzung op. That's not French, is it? And then, does anyone have any communication to make? Das ist nicht der, das ist nicht der Fall. That's not the case. And so everything that's discussed is in Luxembourgish. The boldface here is simply an indication of what the content of that particular discussion was. And down here, notice this is all in French. Now, these are often published in German, at least a synopsis of it. <clears throat> a citizen may write to the national or local government in any of the three official languages, as well as Portuguese. About 10% of the population is Portuguese because of workers who were brought there in the 1960s. Or Italian, or Spanish, or Dutch, or English, or any of a variety of languages. If at all possible, the reply will be in the language of the original letter. Now, some more printed information. Next one, please. This is a, a sign that I took a picture of in the city of Ettelbrook. Notice it's French up here, but the name of the lecture is if you know German, Frauen über 50 und ihre Gesundheit, an Informationsabend für Frauen. So everything on down here is in Luxembourg, except this lady's title in French. So interesting combination of the two languages. Next one, please. An advertisement that appeared in the paper from a hotel. Notice that the address is in French, but everything else is in Luxembourgish, except the name of the, well, brasserie, of course, is the French word for a type of restaurant. Next one, please. I just shot this little <coughs> kind of a billboard sign out on a sidewalk. When you buy three packages of cigarettes, you get one lighter free. Now, this is unusual in that everything is in Luxembourg. There's nothing in French here at all. And this is the way advertising is, is going to the point that it's mostly in Luxembourg. Next one, please. This is interesting because you see the name up here in French. This could either be French or Luxembourgish. But the name of the evening is in German. Die Welt, die ganze Welt ist Himmel Blau. Uh, that little thing there is my reflection of my flash from my camera. I apologize for that. Everything is in German here. But then it tells when it is. And this is all in Luxembourgish. So again, a nice trilingual mixture in an announcement there. And the next one, please. This is simply a street sign. I, 
don't think I understand why it is they have the names of cities in two languages. Actually, some of the original language is German, others French, and this is the Luxembourgish counterpart down here. But it seems to me you'd be able to tell that from the German one. I don't know. Okay, that's it for now. In a court of law, the situation becomes especially interesting. All public announcements about a criminal court case are in French. The oral opening of a case is likewise in French. Witnesses and defendants are usually questioned in Luxembourgish. But if they're from another country, they may be questioned in French, German, or Portuguese, Italian, Spanish, whatever. The lawyers make their statements in French, the verdict is announced in French, and then published in French and German. In a civil trial, all discussion between the judge and the attorneys is in French. Depositions, however, are generally conducted in Luxembourgish. French in Luxembourg is considered more prestigious than German. At the higher end of the social scale, French is usually the language of choice, and there is a stigma associated with people who are not fluent in French. But it should be said that there are many people who are part of this blessed society who, are, who choose to use German as their main second language. As one comes down the social scale, German becomes more and more commonly used. There is, however, a very interesting gap. During the Nazi occupation of 1940 to 1945, it was forbidden to teach French in the public schools. Thus, there is a whole generation of people in their early and mid-60s who do not have a very good command of French, no matter where they are on the social scale. The following overheads summarize the domains we talked about, as well as others that I haven't mentioned yet. Next one, please. Now, there's a lot of information here, so look carefully. If you look at administration, this means that nothing is in French as far as spoken language is concerned. A little in German and quite a bit in Luxembourgish. In law, most of it is French, with some German, but also a lot of Luxembourgish. So this is spoken again. In the church, some French, a lot of German, and a lot of Luxembourgish. Primary schools, a little French, mostly German, and in parentheses here, that means it's unauthorized. They shouldn't be doing it, but they do. In secondary schools, in what the British call the lower forms, a little more French, still a lot of German. In the higher forms, more French and less German, but still unauthorized Luxembourgish. The House of Deputies we just mentioned, some French, no German, a lot of Luxembourgish. And so on down here to the bottom one, oral communication day to day, nothing in French, nothing in German, everything in Luxembourgish. Now, next one is the written language. In administration, French is the language of choice for administration with some German and a little bit of Luxembourgish. In law, it's mainly French, some German, and no Luxembourgish. In the church, again, keep in mind this is written, some French, some German, but a lot of Luxembourgish. In school, a lot of French, a lot of German, and a little bit of Luxembourgish, mainly learning how to read and write. The House of Deputies, we just already mentioned, is French for writing, no German in the written form, and a little bit of Luxembourgish, and so on down the line as you look at all of these various domains here. So it's, it's really an interesting mixture of these languages. Next one, please. Now, looking at Luxembourg, <coughs> Luxembourgish only in spoken and written, going down the domains, administration, a lot of spoken, a little written. In law, a lot of spoken, no written. In church, a lot of spoken, and a lot of written. And so on down through radio, television, theater. I should mention that there is a 24-hour radio station, or actually several of them, that broadcast in Luxembourgish. Television broadcasts in Luxembourgish a few hours a day, and that's increasing. I think this is especially interesting. Answering machines are almost always in Luxembourgish. And again, oral communication, Luxembourgish, is the standard language of communication. Now that we have an idea of the complex linguistic structure of Luxembourg today, we can see that unlike Switzerland, we have a case of integrated multilingualism. Virtually everyone has three languages on a daily basis. I, say, I should say uses three languages on a daily basis. But we should ask the question, what will the future be for the national language of Luxembourg? Will it continue to be an Ausbausprache or developing language? Perhaps developing into a full-fledged language like German and French and eventually become the sole language of Luxembourg? Will it remain about the same as it is now, confined largely to its spoken medium in restricted domains, participating with French and German? Or will it decline 
eventually losing its status altogether, giving out to either French or German. In my opinion, it's very unlikely that Luxembourgish will ever become the sole language of Luxembourg. Don't look soon for a Luxembourgish-only law to be passed in Luxembourg. Given the dependence on larger Europe as a trading and culture partner, it would be almost unthinkable for Luxembourg to reduce its multilingual prowess. Furthermore, the sheer expense of writing and printing books in Luxembourgish for education or other needs would be prohibitive. Most likely, the language will increase its role as a written medium in domains such as journalism, advertising, the media, and internal communication, and continue to be what it has been for generations, the language of choice for spoken communication among the citizens of Luxembourg. Most likely, the lexicon will expand, either by borrowing or simply coining new words as needed. Like all natural languages, Luxembourgish will change. It will remain the most significant symbol of national identity for Luxembourg, and it will adapt to serve the needs of its speakers. Luxembourg wants to avoid isolation, but it does not want to be devoured by its larger neighbors. Its language is one of the most potent tools for maintaining this delicate balance. Thank you. Yes. Uh, they do because it's closer to their language and structure and vocabulary. Yes, that's considered an easier language. That's why I think it's probably the first language in the public schools, because they can adapt to that easier than they can to French. I think it's partly that and partly just historical. I think the press was more or less dominated by German speakers in the very beginning, and so it just kind of continued on that way. Other questions? Yes. It strikes me that the, the Luxembourg form and the German, um, there might be some similarities between the Swiss German and the officially written German. Uh, differences, too. Well, that, that, that's true. Uh, as a matter of fact, I should mention that a lot of people consider Switzerland to have five languages, that Switzerdeutsch or Swiss German is a language by itself. But it's not exactly the same as it is in Luxembourgish because uh, in Switzerland, standard German plays a much more predominant role than it does in Luxembourg. Yeah. You see these dial, the dialect form having sort of come out of that. Yeah. And it's strongly in the spoken. Right. So I see some similarities. Other questions? You mentioned English. Is there much of a move to teach or learn English in school? Oh, they do already. That's their first, second language. So almost every Luxembourg child will learn some English and others quite a bit of English in the school. Yeah, it's, it's becoming stronger. And there's a lot of borrowing from English into Luxembourgish now, too. Uh, they have the word news, which is used on television and radio, which is right, right from English. So they don't use their Luxembourgish word or the German word Nachlichten or whatever else the French word may be. Yeah. I'm not sure that Luxembourg has an army. I guess they must have something. I, I think this is the reason it didn't become a, a bona fide language before, because they had to depend too much on other countries around them and their languages to be able to exist. So, yeah, they, they may have a little army, so maybe it's a little language. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of manufacturing. Uh, it's a, a tourist area for certain people close by. A lot of people from Germany and France and Belgium, places like that, come to Luxembourg on vacation. It's a, it's a very busy banking uh, country. Uh, a lot of the kind of the, the soft industries are located there. So they're, they're doing very well. Uh, I should have pointed out that the banking currency in Luxembourg is based on the Belgian system. And so Belgian, uh, the, the rate of exchange between the Luxembourg franc and the American dollar is always the same as the Belgian franc. And you can use Belgian money in Luxembourg. In fact, on Luxembourg dollar bills, it's French on one side and Luxembourgish on the other side. So you have it either way. And the coins as well. Other questions? Yes. Uh, 
I, I can't say. I think the ones that have the goal to go to the university probably are more motivated to learn it well. But everyone certainly has enough to be able to read the newspaper in German, to be able to understand German and French broadcasts, to be able to read the signs, which are mostly in French, and to converse. If you walk into a pastry shop in Luxembourg City, they will greet you in French. If you respond in Luxembourgish, they'll switch to Luxembourgish, and the rest of the conversation will go like that. If you look at the various items in the bakery shop, some of them have French names and some of them have German names, depending on what they are in their own country. Same with the butcher shop. You'll find bratwurst in there, but you'll also find, you know, cotelette uh, in French. Now, outside of Luxembourg City, it's more likely that you'd greet people you don't know in Luxembourgish. Hand back here. Oh, yeah, they, they, they go to uh, Belgium or France or Germany to get their education, and then they come back. There's no problem with that. There is, however, a very large population of Luxembourg speakers in other parts of Europe, both people who have emigrated as well as people who uh, spoke Luxembourgish before this big change in the, in the borders and so forth, and for generations their family has spoken that. I was told there are 75,000 speakers of Luxembourgish in the United States, people who have come here. So it is spoken outside the country, but not... A whole lot. And the people that go there to live generally don't bother to learn it unless they have children, and the children then learn it to be able to get along with other children because up until age six, the children in Luxembourg don't know French or German. They hear it in the radio perhaps or on the television, but they generally speak only their own native language. Other questions? Yes. Well, yes, I, I mentioned uh, signage, for example. I think that more of the official signs will be maybe first in French and Luxembourgish and then eventually in Luxembourgish, but they've got to be careful. They don't want people who know only French, mainly visitors, not to be able to uh, understand what's going on in the country. And so they want to be able to be as, as uh, tourist and as visitor-friendly as possible with their language. And again, because the, uh, the citizens there can read French, it really isn't a, b a very big problem. I, I think a balance will eventually find itself, but that balance will never be Luxembourg only. It'll be a combination of the three, always. Yeah. Did the immigrants from Portugal, for example, who work in France and other countries, do they learn one of the other three languages? Or are they, the, do they congregate? The influx of, of Portuguese speakers has pretty well dropped off now. And the children of these families have learned Luxembourgish. The parents, for the most part, have not. Some of them have. So I think this, this minority is getting smaller and smaller to the point where it will be gone in 20 years. Uh, many of them, of course, came for a short time and then left, went back to, to uh, Portugal. But I think that those who stayed there are assimilating fairly well, especially the younger generations. Yes? Yes. <laughs> I think that a lot of people, especially monolingual people, will look at this and say, isn't that terribly confusing and perhaps even emotionally damaging to have to deal with that many languages all the time? And the answer apparently is no. They get along perfectly well. And they can keep them straight. Uh, I, I've heard people wonder about their friends trying to raise children in bilingual situations. No problem. And I think that Luxembourg is an ideal example of how languages can exist together can function interactively among each other without any problem at all. So the schizophrenia part, uh, no. It, it's, it's true integrated multilingualism. Yeah. Well, as I said, there's not much that can be called literature. In the 19th century, some poetry. Uh, there may have been a, a novel written. I don't know. But it's still very, very small. And so I guess in this century, I'm, I'm sorry, this century I'm, I'm, 100 years behind the time. In the last century, 1900s, um, there was some written, but I don't think we're, we'll ever see a large amount of, of Luxembourgish literature. Here, here's the man that knows. Okay. Two or three original novels, yeah. Uh, there's almost no attempt to translate other languages into Luxembourgish because they can read English. They can read German. They can read French. And so there's no need for this. And for a person to sit down and write a novel in Luxembourgish is quite a task. And to find a publisher is even, I think, a greater task. There are publishing houses there, but uh, 
It's, it's not lucrative. Other questions? I believe the sunshine is calling. I appreciate your coming. I appreciate your staying. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. That was very kind of you.